And there's a history to boxing, though, that unfortunately, you know, because I care about the sports, it's been my whole life. Um, that it's kind of it, corrupt. It, it, yeah. That it's got a reputation and, as being corrupt. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, like, there's, there's a part, a good part where the history goes back longer, farther than any other sport. Any other sport. I mean, it was the first sport in the Olympics. It goes back further there. And it was the biggest sport in, in this country, bigger than baseball at one time. It was that big. I mean, you know, so, and now it's it's not. And it, it, it it's too bad because, and it's too bad that the kids, that the younger people, they don't have the ability to, learn about those fighters, those special fighters that were special. They really were. And they were special for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Like like Jackie Robinson was special. We know. We don't have to go into why he was special. But nobody knows that Joe Lewis, he was quiet and everything, but when he was in the Army and there was, you know, segregation and all that crap going on, he, he quietly used his position as heavyweight champ of the world to make sure that when he went to movies and they put him in the front row and he saw that blacks weren't allowed to come in, he said, I'm not going in there unless blacks can come in there. When he went to other sort of events where the same kind of junk was going on, he very quietly but powerfully integrated things and, and said, no, I'm going to make a change here. You, you, you're not going to have me and not have people that look like me you know, kept out. So he, and there were people, I've read about it because I like reading about those things, about history, um, to see how we could be better and and um, where we've come from. And there were history of black families, you know, poor black families that would, would get hope from just saying, hey, Lewis did it. They would tell their kids, hey, right. Joe, listen, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear that you can't do this. Joe Lewis did it. And so he was that important. That's all. That's the only point I'm making here. He was that f freaking important that that history and the history of other fighters like him doesn't have to be black fighters, but that what they fought, what they did, what they overcame, where they came from. Benny Leonard, um, one of the greatest Jewish fighters of all time. It was a time when. Uh, and and it's still around. Unfortunately, there's a lot of anti-Semitism, but there was a time where. It, you know, it was tough being a Jew. And and you, you're growing up and you get called a kike. I don't know if I'm pronouncing right. I think it was yeah. right. And you get called all those kind of, I don't even know what the hell it means. I just know it's a bad name to call a Jew. And, and you had all that stuff going on. And Jews women thought of being... They were thought of moving towards banking and they they moving towards things were making money and they were, later on they started doing that. But they were in the ghettos and they were trying to pull themselves out. And so at that era, during that time, the 20s to 30s, the Jews were some of the best fighters because that was their way of getting out. But there was, other, there was another significance to being a Jewish fighter that a lot of the kids, they weren't thought of as being tough, so they got picked on and, and thought of that they're going to go more towards academic and other stuff. So there was a weakness perceived. Not true. None of this stuff is Just usually... Just perceived because they were smart. Yeah. yeah. So now all of a sudden, Benny Lennon comes along when the sport's the biggest sport in the country and he's the best freaking fighter in the game. And he combed his hair before he got in the ring and he would come out without it being messed. And this was, this guy was, I mean, he was, he was Michael Jordan. I mean, before that stuff, before Michael Jordan, before Air Jordan, before anything. I mean, this guy was not only tough, he was not only a champion, which obviously connected to being tough by itself, but he was, he was smart, he was, he was cool. He had pizzazz, he was a man, and there were Jewish families. You don't hear about these stories, but there were Jewish families I've read and I've heard from people where say, hey, don't let nobody pick on you. Benny Leonard is the best fighter in the world. Jews are tough. We're, we're not just smart. 
were tough. Betty Leonard shows that. So that kind of history, that kind of pulling of people up in many different ways, not just economically uh, out of poverty, but, but emotionally, mentally, because you can be in poverty mentally. You can be in a low place mentally. It doesn't have to be, you know, financially all the time. You know, where you have holes in your shoes and, you, and, and you're wearing shirts that don't fit. No, it can be the way you feel about yourself that is, is, without, is, is without prosperity, with, with, without value. You have no value for yourself as a person. That's the worst poverty in the freaking world. There's nothing lower than that. And Joe Lewis and Benny Leonard, they were fighters. They weren't baseball players. They pulled people out of those places. They let people know they had value, that their race had value, their people had value. They had value. And that should be known. And you can go anywhere and, and I'm glad you can because I love all sports. You can go anywhere and you can read about the greatness of the baseball players and the greatness of, of course, NFL hasn't been around that long, but the greatness of those players and the greatness of the NBA players. But where did the kids ever get to read and to hear and to see about the greatness of these people, these fighters? V nowhere. V very little. Very little. It's not there. Why? Because... Again, I'm not going to get into craziness, but the powers that be, the listen, it's not marketed properly. I get it. It doesn't have a commission, so it doesn't take care of itself the way the UFC, the greatness about the, why the UFC grew so much is they marketed themselves in a tremendous way. So there's nobody. Boxing is just there. It takes care of itself. It exists because it's man against man. So it's always going to be there. But nobody's building it. Nobody's marketing it. No one's feeding the monster to make it bigger. It's a plant that's in the corner of, of, of your office that doesn't get sun, doesn't get watered, <laughs> and it, but it's still there. Right, right. It's still there. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that Sorry, I, I didn't want to yell because now I people are probably to. happy. But <laughs> 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 but but it should be fed a little bit. It should be watered a little bit. Well, you know because what of what it? I just described. You know what feeds it? Guys when like you. Well, guys like you. Guys who have a, a deep appreciation for the history of the sport. Guy, guys who have a deep appreciation of what it meant when Joe Lewis beat Max Schmeling. Guys, guys who understand what it meant when Sugar Ray Robinson was the best fighter in the world. And, and everybody knew it, and he'd pull up in a fucking pink Cadillac with a beautiful suit on. And, and, he, and he made— He elevated. Uh, he elevated people in Harlem, everywhere yes. around the world. But Harlem, he, had, he owned half of Harlem. He owned restaurants and, yep. and, and, and stores and barbershops and, and everything. And, and you wanted to be there because that's where Sugar Ray Robinson yep. came from. Yep. It was great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, it's, a, it's a rich part of history that really does get ignored. Let me tell you something about Schmeling. You brought up, you know a lot about, obviously, this stuff. And that's what it's nice to talk about, which Schmeling was a hell of a fighter. Joe Lewis was the brown bomb. He was coming up. He was undefeated. And um, Schmeling had the great quote before the fight. You know, it's kind of like the Babe Ruth thing that did it really happen where he pointed out and then he hit the whole, you know, those, right. those are great stories. But, right. but where, wh what's the real truth behind them? You know, we don't know. We don't care. We don't care at a certain point. You know why? Because they let us feel good. They let us dream about possibilities. And we should all have possibilities to dream about. And they make somebody feel good because, you know, the Babe Ruth one was connected to a sick kid. So it, it, it's a nice thing. It's where sports can be better than just sports, than just somebody participating in it. it. It can go beyond that. It can be stronger than that. And that's some of the good stuff about it. And so Schmeling, the great story, he didn't point to, you know, the, to the fence, but he said before the fight, I see something you know, what the, that's my, my, my trying to be an accent for the German, you know? But I, I sound more like Schultz from Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Every time you try to do something like with certain, yeah. you know, ethnic, you know, pronunciations, um, 
you you sound like you you go to one of those sitcoms. You go to yeah. one of those places, you know. And when I say somebody, I think my kid, I think my son said, uh, I, uh, you know, he had watched one of them, uh, and I think he said, you, you, you sound like Sergeant Schultz, <laughs> like from Hogan's uh, Heroes. But and he said, I see something. And what he saw was that Lewis would jab, and he would leave. You should never leave your head on the on the right side. Because if you leave your head, you know, you move your head to the right side, you're in the path to the right hand. You should actually finish on the left side because then you're outside the right hand. You follow? Mm -hmm. There's the right hand. Over here, it can hit you. Over right. here, you're outside it. Right. So he had a habit of, and he had a great trainer, he had a habit, though, at that point, of leaving his head over on the right. So smelling saw something, as he said, that he could hit him with the right hand. He could time it. Over the jam. Now, Schmeling was of the ilk, of the level, of the caliber. It wasn't just about talent. He could punch. He was a good fighter. But he was a pro. What do I mean by that? A lot of guys were f would hesitate a little bit. Same opening. They might see it. But it was the Brown Bomber who was knocking everyone out. So they hesitate. They were, they were afraid. Normal. A lot of people are afraid of that word. I mean, it's there. I mean, without it, we're not alive. So he, they, they might see the same thing, but they want it at a pro level. A pro level is a guy that can do what he has to do and no emotions interfere with doing it. I mean, that's my simplest way. Webster's might not say that, but that's what I would say. So they might have seen the opening, but they would hesitate just enough and it'd be gone. The door closed. Because it's, it's, it's like life. It's moments. Capture a moment, lose a moment. And, but this guy was a pro. He, he didn't let that come in there and make him hesitate, that, that fear. He controlled it. And if the opening was there, bang, he was going to throw the punch. So he did, and he dropped loose a few times, and, you know, he, he won that fight. And... What was, round did he stop him in? I can't remember. Maybe, maybe the ninth, but it was late in the fight. But he had hurt him, and right. you know Lewis was taking a, a beating. So Lewis went on; he won the world title, and um, he beat Braddock for the title. Cinderella Man, great movie yeah. was made about. You know, he came from welfare to being a world champion. That's the Braddock story, without getting into it too much. So he, he, Lewis beats Braddock. And had to give a percentage, you know. Don King and Aaron might not have been around then, but but the people that taught him what to do were around, taught him how to take advantage of fighters, taught him how what options were before options were ever known. <laughs> you know, uh, the Braddock, I think I forget his name, but Braddock's manager basically made Lewis and his people agree to give him a percentage of his purses for the rest of his career to get the fight. What? Yeah. So, really? Yeah. So, I mean, you could obviously research it and look into How it. How much and, percentage? Well, I don't know. I, I, listen, I could say 10%, but I don't want to say it definitively right. because right. I'm not positive. Right. But, but there was an understanding that, you know, you, you're not getting a fight otherwise. Right. Like, you want to get the fight now? And listen, it was, uh, like I said, you, you know, not great guys, but... King and Aram, uh, they they had other guys that were before them that taught them some of these moves. Right. You know, that woman so nice. But there's always a history of good and bad. Sure. Always. Who's good? Well, there's... there's well, a, we'll get to that. I yeah, want to know who, if there's yeah. a, like a shining star promoter well, out there. <laughs> I'll try to think about it. But <laughs> so we... So they go and they he, he wins the title. And of course, the... The biggest sport in the country. So right. all the press is there, and they're, Joe, you're the champion world. It's not yet. Not yet. What do you mean, not yet? Just won the title. Not yet. Not till I beat that man. He didn't even have to say his name. Not till I beat that man. That's how much pride he had. And listen, he's the real deal. Because in his mind, how can I be champion if a guy knocked me out? Right. So when that fight took place, I mean, you talk about huh, a setting, a stage. You know, 
to nowadays people say, oh, I'm on the stage. There's a lot of pressure, you know. Hey, I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it, but a lot of pressure, you know. I'm just, a lot of people looking, a lot of people, you know, depending on I, I, a lot of stuff going on, you know. And, and I, you know, maybe I got a headache. But Joe Lewis had World War II on the horizon. The president of the United States called him up. And you had Nazi Germany. You had a guy named Hitler that, that is saying that he's got, you know, the master race. It's going to take over the world. Just starting that stuff, for not too far away from World War II. And you got all that stuff permeating in the air. And you got Lewis fighting a guy who, of course, you know, <laughs> propaganda was started by the Germans, if you want. almost To me, almost invented that word because you had the propaganda minister and you had all these terrible people with Hitler that were putting out that they're the master race, they're this, they're that. You had the Jesse Owens situation in the Olympics. Yeah, and now you had the biggest sport in the biggest country and the champion of that sport, the heavyweight champ. Joe Lewis, and he's fighting the German fighter, Schmeling, the second time, now for the title. And, of course, you had Hitler and all his psycho fans, all these people that were, their job was to, to promote it, so to speak. And they come and they're saying, we will show the world that we're superior. And there's no better way to show it than in a ring. And so Lewis has to, he's got to, he's got to carry all this stuff. I mean, think about it. And he's a black guy <laughs> in a country that, that he still can't go into certain places to eat. And he's got to carry the whole, <sighs> he's got to carry the whole country and not let them down. And the president calls him. And again, we don't know if this is a legendary story. We don't know if it's completely true. But supposedly the president called him and said, Joe, you got to win this one for the good guys. That, that's, that's one of the legends. I don't know if it's true, but I know that I'm sure he called him. I'm sure he called him. And Lewis has to go into, he's got to go into Yankee Stadium outdoors and in Times Square in New York, they used to have it set up where they would, the radio, because all the fights were on radio back then, and some of them on fights uh, on TV, on Gillette, Calvacator Sports, and all that stuff, Friday Night Fights, but was, was coming along, you know, just coming along. But radio was the thing. And so in Times Square, you had the radio speakers outdoors, you know, playing the fight. Broadcasting the fight. So people out on the streets, they hear the radio. And they hear, you know, Joe Lewis is walking into the ring. And, you know, and, and you got Yankee Stadium. You got the place full. And you got the whole world of everything I just described. The good, the bad, the evil, the ugly. Everything. It's not a movie. It's real life. And you got Joe Lewis. And he gets in that ring and he annihilates with all this pressure with, with that, that he's got to save the, basically the United States and the world from, from looking like this, this ugly scourge and, and, and disease of the Nazi party is, is going to take over the world, is greater than us. And he, and he single-handedly has to prove that. And he... He goes in there and he annihilates the guy in one round with all that stuff hanging over him. I think that's the greatest single event in the history of the world. Pull that fight up. Pull that fight up and put it in the background. And I think that that, when you talk about all the things that we're here to talk about, about character, about talent, about perseverance, about resiliency, about, about caring about more than yourself, about selflessness, about strength. When you talk about all those things that we try to say that we care about and that we sometimes look to, to be, and very rarely can we be that, he was all that. He was all of that. And There it is right there. I mean, how great is that? 
And he stalked the guy. He stalked the guy. And his punches were short and powerful. And he was the greatest finisher in the history of heavyweight boxing because when he hurt you, you didn't survive. He got rid of you. He put punches together, and they were short, and he was always in position. Look at his legs. He's always in position. You move forward, he takes a little step forward back to give himself room. The shortness of those punches is absolutely beautiful. If you wanted to teach a young fighter how to punch correctly, Joe Lewis, there's no better guy to watch than Joe Lewis. No. You, so did you see, Joe, what he did a, a minute ago? Step. No, a minute ago, Schmeling tried to catch him with that same right hand he had knocked him out two years earlier. Go back. No, he just missed it. But he changed. He stepped out. He changed his distance this time. Mm -hmm. Because Jackie Blackburn, who's a great fighter, a black fighter, he was a trainer. He was a great trainer. Nobody hears about Jackie Blackburn. What a great fighter he was and what a great trainer he was and how he wasn't allowed to fight white fighters. And he beat Ooh. everybody. Look, Look at that. that. Hook. It kind of left hook. Instead of laying his head on the right like he did the first fight, he changed his range and he made that right hand miss. And look how calm he is. Look how calm he is. Look how focused he is. It's beautiful to watch. L really? The shortness of those punches look at is that. phenomenal. And look, watch his legs, Joe. Watch, watch how he's always in position. Look at oh. that. Look at that right hand. But, but what did we miss? What didn't you see? Go back. The sidestep. No. The blinding jab that, that ah. sets it up where you don't see it. Watch. The jab is just a decoy. Just yeah. so he can hit it with the right so you just don't see it. it. Right. What a beautiful sidestep, too, right after he lands the right hand. Beautiful. Look, look at, at that. that right there. Well, that's why he's the greatest finisher of all time. Watch, watch the way he finishes this guy. Well, it's going to go to the body oh, and then the head. That right, right hand. Right hand to the body, right hand to the head. Oh, that look right at that. hand is so short. And even when he's got the guy hurt. Look at the guy. Look at that. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. And he did all of that with everything we just talked about for the last 20 minutes hanging over him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's a that, giant that, piece of history that people don't talk about. But doesn't that make you think a little bit? Doesn't yeah. that make you feel something about Yes. Really? Yeah. Well, it's one of the reasons why I'm a Giants fan of the sport. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, and that, that alone is, uh, in terms of like historical impact, I agree with you. It's one of the biggest moments in all of sports ever. In life? In life. 